From Harry Hurley Way in the world's playground to the broadcast pioneers of Philadelphia Hall of Fame. I want to congratulate my friend, Harry Hurley. You're about to find out why Harry Hurley has been named to the Talkers Magazine list of the 100 most important talk show hosts in the nation. Live from the studios of Town Square Media in Northfield, it's Hurley in the Morning on WPG Talk Radio 95.5. Hey, thanks very much. It's four minutes past the hour. Very, very pleased to welcome for the first time. He's, he's a great man, a great leader. Colonel Patrick Callahan is here. He is the 14th Colonel Superintendent of the New Jersey State Police in, in our country's history. The New Jersey State Police considered the most diverse uniformed police agency in America. And he'll be in town with the governor, with Matt Doherty, and I'm sure some others uh, to tour the medical field station that's going to be uh, housed at the Atlantic City Convention Center. And you can only imagine, ladies and gentlemen listening, from the Army Corps of Engineer to the state police to all the other partners involved to to get that building that's about 20 years old. So it is modern to an extent, but 20-year-old building and to put it in a condition where it can basically be a field hospital is no small feat. Joining us now is Colonel Callahan. Colonel, welcome, sir. How are you? Good morning, Harry. Thanks for having me on. And I am standing up very straight, very tall <laughs> for you, Colonel. Please, please. I'm good. Thank you. So tell us about you're going to be touring tomorrow. Uh, it, 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 t- let me know if some of the comments I made uh, in the preamble here relative to making this happen and everybody involved with it, uh, this is no small feat, is it? No, it is It is uh, something to watch, and I, I can't even, I just am in awe to watch uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, FEMA, or state police partners, or Department of Health, uh, to increase bed capacity by 1,000 in those medical stations. Uh, there's 250 at Secaucus right now. There's 500 in Edison, and the one in the convention center in Atlantic City will be for 250 beds. And uh, it's just, like I said, it's uh, it's just something to, to behold to watch our, our country at work during uh, an unprecedented crisis. And we think about World War II when the hotels on the boardwalk, uh, what is now Resorts Casino Hotel, then Chalfon Haddon Hall, that became a hospital during World War II. We're Americans. This is what we do. We, we innovate. Uh, we do what we have to do during times of crisis. That's right. That's right. There's no uh, – everything is on the table, as we say, that whether it's a college dorm, whether it's a mothballed hospital or a hotel that's been uh, maybe you know defunct for a little bit. Uh, when we're looking to, one, take care of people or, two, to isolate and quarantine – you know, frontline workers. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no stone that we're leaving unturned in this effort. We're visiting with Colonel Patrick Callahan. He leads the New Jersey State Police. We're talking about this medical station at Atlantic City's Convention Center that uh, he'll be touring tomorrow. In terms of that facility, my understanding in the beginning, unless something has changed, is that that would be for non-COVID-19. The idea would be uh, to to use it for people that are not dealing with the coronavirus. Is that correct? That is true. And we've had great conversations with the Department of Defense, uh, Lieutenant General Richardson and Major General Milhorn, who's the the lead from the Army Corps. But we we, we go into it with the understanding that we're going to use these field medical stations for low acuity, non-COVID patients. However, the transmissibility and the the nature of this virus is such that we also need to plan to cohort within those uh, facilities and make sure that we have isolation methods in place because the reality of it is, Harry, that, you know, there's probably going to be patients with, you know, that test positive that end up in these uh, that end up in these medical stations. And then we're just going to say worst case scenario, if it were, because we hope it's not even needed. But if it was needed, because I, I've been talking to a lot of people, wouldn't take much. Wouldn't be take it wouldn't take too many mistakes in our southernmost most portion of the state to make a mistake where this could become a hot spot, and then with a small hospital in Cape May and two hospitals in uh, Atlanta County, it wouldn't take much. We don't have the uh, number of beds that they have in New York City and some of the other uh, larger areas, and you never know in this kind of thing. I mean, for example, the USN uh, Comfort was supposed to be non COVID. And then then it wasn't then it then it it became if they needed it for COVID. So this I guess we have to be nimble that 
this would be used for anything that would be required, including nothing, all the way to any type of um, uh, increased uh, need for it to switch the um, the the initial uh, process of what we thought it would be. Right, spot on. And there's you know our, the greatest thing that could happen is that we the Army Corps and FEMA build this out and we never use it. Uh, I, I doubt that's going to be the case, seeing how what's happened in Secaucus and Edison. Um, and like you said, the southern part of the, of the state, the, the hospital infrastructure is not as robust, and the capacity just isn't there. So this this medical station at the at the convention center is going to be a, a key asset for us to have um, as this virus kind of cascades through the center part and down to the southern part of the state. So uh, that's why it's important that everybody stay home. I know there's a lot of the weather gets nice and people want to come out and uh, it is such a transmissible disease that um, you may be, you may have no symptoms and be passing it on to a loved one. And that's, that's the part that folks need to understand. You know, sometimes you put a, not that celebrities are any more important than anybody else, but I was reading a story the other day, Von Miller, who I think is quite a gentleman and a great football player, a great defensive football player. Wasn't a bad dancer, by the way. I'll just slip that in. He was on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, But he said he did everything right. He quarantined. He did absolutely everything right. And guess what? He came up positive for the coronavirus. So it is a sticky, very, very contagious initially virus. And then if you get the COVID-19 disease. So there you have it. Somebody that was compliant got it anyhow. Yeah. And it's um, and I think in the commissioner of health, I always defer to the medical professionals, but I think there's also a few different strains on this one. So the the 85 or 90 percent of people that get it and are able to stay home and and take care of themselves. uh, There's also 10 or 15 percent that aren't. And whether you had underlying conditions or not, the fact that we're up over 4000 deaths in New Jersey is an indication of just how deadly it is. And without a without a vaccine and without a real treatment, um, you know, we I take it as seriously. I, I wish other people would have, if if some folks had to sit in and when you're planning mortuary affairs for, for thousands and thousands of, of possible casualties, that's a that's a reality that people need to understand that this is not uh this isn't a joke and we're not doing it to make people's lives inconvenient. We're doing it to save people's lives. Such an important point because we're at now almost what, the five and a half week point. Most people have been shut in since March 16th. So I think as Americans, uh, we have a lot of pr- national pride. We we knew what was being asked of us on an every two-week period. Uh, and as it goes on now into week six, this starts to challenge people's uh, sanity. Uh, I, I almost mean that literally, but but I'll stop short because I'm also not a doctor. So that also, there's a pent-up um, frustration that's starting and and all of this is um, something that has to be taken into, into consideration. The New Jersey State Police, for those listening that don't know, you are the primary ready reserve of emergency services personnel in all natural disasters, acts of terrorism, and public emergency decora- uh, declarations. In addition to our distinguished guest, Colonel Patrick Callahan, Being the 14th superintendent of the New Jersey State Police, you're also the state director of emergency management. Uh, What is your uh, paramilitary organization up to these days? Yeah, (laughs) they're up to just about everything. Yeah, you're right, Harry. We are one of two states in the union. It's just us and Michigan that the Office of Emergency Management is embedded within the state police structure. Um, We think it works. Uh, If you look at a Sandy or even an event like this where if we need 100 troopers on LBI or if we need 50 troopers in Atlantic City, there's not another entity to go to. You know, we can just make that uh, order or request and it it happens almost immediately. So we have troopers right now um, in every county embedded with every Office of Emergency Management. We have a team that's assisting with the the hospital uh, capacity build out and shoulder to shoulder with the Army Corps and FEMA. We have troopers embedded in the mortuary affairs, you know, those temporary morgue sites. Uh, really, every ass troopers involved in our warehouse and our PPE uh, procurement vetting companies that say, yeah, I got 10 million N95 masks, and then finding out that it was, you know, it was fraudulent or, or just not so. So basically, every aspect that this is. Uh, that this virus has touched, we're we're involved with it as the as the hub and as the 
as he said, as the Office of Emergency Management. Something I was thinking about in advance, Colonel, of our interview, I'm the son of a 50-plus year uh, nurse. I'm, the, I'm a nurse dad. My daughter is a nurse. My son-in-law is a nurse practitioner. My future daughter-in-law uh, is a nurse. My uh, sister-in-law is a nurse. Your mother is a retired nurse. Your wife is a nurse. So you you have skin in the game. You also had personal sacrifice because you had a big family milestone that had to be postponed. Uh, so this isn't the colonel just laying a smackdown on the citizens of New Jersey. Uh, you are also directly affected by all this. Yeah, and that, and again, uh, sacrifice. I mean, families associated with either nurse, you know, healthcare professionals or first responders. I think they understand sacrifice uh, and understand that, I can, you know, we can't sit there every day and ask people to not gather and then I go and have my my daughter's wedding in June or to have a birthday party. My dad will be 81 on on May 1st, and uh, you know, we're thinking of doing the drive by kind of thing that you see. Um, it, it's really just so important that uh, that people understand the, the severity of it and that that yeah, having a, a mom that's an RN, a, a wife that's an RN, my wife's grandmother was an RN down in Louisiana for 40 years. So um, it's it's definitely uh, close to our hearts and, and what they're doing in the hospitals day in and day out to to sacrifice. Um, it's, it's certainly not lost on me. Colonel Callahan, let me go back to the comment I made a, a few minutes ago when I mentioned that folks are entering well into the sixth week of the stay-at-home orders that are in effect. And it's understandable why why they're in effect. This is so we don't do all this work and open too soon only to start all over again. And who knows? Uh, it could be an area like here that's been quieter that could become a hot spot if we make the wrong decision. But what do you say to folks, Colonel Callahan, that are stressed to the max? If people think just being stuck in is, oh, my gosh, this isn't like World War II when when our parents saved the world. You, you just ask to stay home. It is very stressful. And I talk to, as you know, I talk to a lot of people and I've talked to listeners who are not handling this very well at all. And then you have people that think they're going to lose their business and they may if this goes on for very much longer or in the process of losing their business, trying to apply for loans and grants and things. What do you say to folks that are extremely stressed out at the moment? Yeah, I, I think one, they'd have, they could should also be aware of the, you know, the processes or even the helplines that we have set up with um, human services because uh, it's not I mean it's it's stressful for all of us so uh, I think uh, for for those folks that are in their homes and worrying about their business worrying about their family not being able to see loved ones it is a it is an hour to hour struggle uh, I think the I think people need to one be patient to understand that there will be an, an end to this and there will be a slow unrolling of everything and we will get back to what you know we call this new normal. Uh, resiliency is a key part to all of us, and not only in Jersey, across the country. Uh, I was with a chief from Texas a couple months ago, uh, and he used the word, people think resiliency is bouncing back. Uh, he'd like to think of it as bouncing forward because we're really never going to be the same where you know where we were a, a month or two ago, so we need to have it in our mind that when we get up and put our feet on the floor in the morning, that we're going to bounce forward, not not back to where we were, but forward, and come out of this on the other side. Um, even though we've been apart, I think we are going to see that where there's a togetherness and a resetting of of priorities across uh, New Jersey and America that I think will serve us. Although struggling through it now and getting through the day to day in the trenches, but I do think that there will be uh, a positive outcome that that a lot of us can't really see right now, but it's gonna it's gonna be here and we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be uh, locked arm in arm uh, as as we come out the other side of this. Awesome comment. We have a couple of minutes left with Colonel Patrick Callahan, superintendent of the New Jersey State Police. Ha Colonel, how did your service during September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks? This is a, a bio war. Uh, I would imagine that 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 experience is transferable, isn't it? I think it is. I think it uh, I think at first when this was I think the uh, the reaction mentally was somewhat similar. I think we had this sense of. Uh, how did this happen and how did we get here? Um, I think the difference is the unknown nature of this. We kind of, in short order, we knew who had who had 
done the 9-11 attacks. Uh, Ground Zero is as tragic as it was. We looked at the that rubble and knew what we had to do. You know, we needed backhoes and we needed union workers. We needed iron workers. We needed dump trucks. And there's a set methodology to getting back, uh, you know, to getting back up on our feet. And with this one, the unknown nature of it has, like to your point before, has people stressed out and has people a little bit on edge, has people canceling weddings and canceling first holy communions and and wondering, when is this going to end? Uh, I mean, think about it. People can't even have a funeral, really, uh, for, for people who die now. I mean, it's really, right. really painful stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, and, that, and I think that's another piece that folks from a nursing, uh, like a, for a nurse to have to hold up a phone to a patient to to give their last words to their family. That's you know, there's no there's no block in nursing school about that. That's just being compassionate and and as human to the core as you can be. And that's not you know that's a that's an anguish that nurses and doctors are going through now too. And people think oh they're just changing dressings and starting an IV or intubating somebody. Now they're they're connected uh like these they're the surrogate family members right now and I think that people need you know shouldn't forget that because it's happening and they like I said to not have a wake and a funeral where we like to gather and, and pay tribute to folks. Uh I know one thing, we're gonna have a tribute on the other side of this for everybody that was impacted by this and, and it'll be in blue mass fashion and whether you were a first responder or not, we're gonna gather to to pay um uh, the, the tribute that we should to everybody that's been impacted and, and devastated by this. For everyone that's been listening for the last 16 minutes, and we have to say goodbye in, in just the next few seconds, so I keep my word, and I know that the colonel is very, very busy this morning. Uh, your relationship building talents, it's a characteristic trait that, that not a lot of people possess. It's its apparent just listening to you in the past 16 minutes, and I've, I've known uh, of you uh, quite well since you were sworn in. In 2017, your work with the federal government, FEMA, Army Corps of Engineers, FBI, Homeland Security, I could keep going on, and then all the state departments and agencies and counties and municipalities that you work with. Uh, You're the right man at the right time. I've always believed that there are no coincidences. There are no accidents. We are where we're supposed to be, and you're supposed to be in there, Colonel, leading us, uh, helping to keep the state safe. Thank you so much for your service, and and I'd love to do this again. I want to thank my friend, our mutual friend, Kevin Walls, for introducing us. Colonel, he's a great guy, as you know, and and, um, I appreciate him. And I really appreciate this opportunity to present you this morning. Thank you, Harry. I I remain honored and humbled by it daily. It is... uh... It is a special team to be a part of, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time for uh, to talk to me. Let's do this again, Colonel. All right, well, certainly. God bless, Aaron. Thank you, sir. Be well. Stay safe. Stay healthy.